far more serious than mere ecological disaster. According to his book, The Truth Vibrations, the world as we know it is about to end. David Icke. So you're all in the turquoise, which of course is the, mm. is the collar. Mm. Hold on a sec. Yeah, that's a good start. Fill your mouth full of sweets. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, see, the, the, the world is not necessarily going to end, but um, the Earth is going to go through a series of geological changes that are necessary to make sure it doesn't end. That's the point. Yeah. Uh, did I see, see you say that, that turquoise is the color? What, what's yeah. turquoise going to do? Well, there is an energy... Um, that uh, comes from a being called the Godhead, which is, I mean, we, we talk about God. The, the Godhead is not um, a guy with a beard sitting on a cloud. It is a massive spirit, the basis of all creation. And coming out from this Godhead, round all creation, through all the stars, through all the planets and uh, everything else, is the life force known as the light. I mean, the Bible refers to the light. And uh, Within this light are various other energies which have certain gifts. And these other energies have a frequency that is the same as all the colors. Yeah. And this turquoise is actually is the same frequency as an energy called um, love and wisdom. Therefore, when you wear that color, you attract it. When you wear black, you attract a color that is the opposite to love and uh, all the things we wish to bring to the earth. But and it attracts another kind of energy yeah. which, is, which is very... Um, but this is very hard. This is very hard on priests and nuns, isn't it? <laughs> well... <laughs> maybe that's a sign that maybe all the truth is not uh, in the hands of the traditional church that has been with us over all these thousands of years. Well, now, let me get the story right. The press claim that you claim to be the son of God. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes, you see, the thing is that... Uh, you see, it's quite, it's quite funny, really. You know, 2,000 years ago, had a guy called Jesus sat here and said these same things, you would still be laughing. It's really, really funny that we've not really moved on that much. Um, there have been many missions, if you like, over the last 12,000 years to try to free the earth from control by an, a force that is working against the Godhead. The Godhead is the basis of all love and wisdom and all the rest of it in the whole of creation. But there is another being, the Bible refers to it as Satan, the real name is Lucifer, who is trying to take over creation. And because of the very important part this particular planet plays in the whole, actually destroying this planet would be a major step forward in that direction. Therefore, for the last 12,000 years, um, the influence on this planet has been from this being and from the energy which he sends out. And it's an energy that stimulates people to think in a certain way. So, we hate, we are aggressive, we have no forgiveness, we have no tolerance. And when, and I ask the audience this, when you survey the world today, you know, when a child dies in this world of preventable disease every two seconds, when the economic system of the world must destroy the earth simply to, for that system to survive, when you see all the wars and when you see all the pain and when you see all the suffering, is it a force of love and wisdom and tolerance that is in control of this planet? Or is it a force that wishes to bring about the very hate the very aggression, the very suffering. Because the, the key thing to get over, Terry, is this. When we think, it is not a vacuum. We, when we think, we create an energy field. This is how telepathy works. An energy field leaves one being and other beings can tune into it and read that thought. When you think thoughts of love and wisdom and of tolerance and all the things we wish to bring to the earth, you create a certain kind of thought energy, the very same energy that the Godhead sends around creation. When you think the other thoughts of hatred, of anger, of aggression, you create a different kind of energy known as negativity, which is very, very destructive. This being called Lucifer lives off this energy. 
So the more that is produced on this planet, the more powerful that being becomes. Therefore, he stimulates and has stimulated this planet over 12,000 years since he's been in control to produce as much of this energy as possible. So evil has been in control of the planet for 12,000 years? It has been the dominating force. Evil's not the right word. It is imbalance. Um, but it has been increasingly in control. As I repeat, survey the world, ladies and gentlemen. Is, is the force of love in control of this world, guiding this planet at this time? Of course not. The negativity, the thoughts that I'm talking about that are very destructive, are pouring out of this planet well, let me, let me um, every day. Was it, was it a great shock for you to discover this at 38? Well, I, th I, think the, <laughs> I, think the word, I think the word is gobsmacked. But again, again, you know the best way of removing negativity is to laugh and be joyous. So I'm delighted that there's so much laughter in the audience tonight. But no, um, it's a... But just let, just let me, just let me say this. They're laughing at you. They're not laughing with you. Fine. I didn't Terry, mean, that, I didn't mean no, that to be hurtful. Terry. I don't want you to misinterpret it. They're not laughing in sympathy with you. No, let me say two things to that. First of all, if anyone believes after 12,000 years of this truth being lost uh, and forgotten, that coming out with it initially is going to get any kind of reaction other than that one or condemnation, then I would be a crackpot if I thought that was, that was the, the case. The other thing is, there is this great illusion, you know, that Jesus was born and stood up and said, I know who I am. It was revealed to him in stages. He was very, very close to beginning the mission which is described in the Bible but not described brilliantly accurately um, before he knew who he was and when he came out Terry and said I am the Son of God I am an aspect of the soul of the Godhead incarnate because of things that need to be done on this planet urgently um, people laughed people ridiculed and in the end you know they crucified him because the intolerance on the planet at that time was so great that if someone else in the traditional church says we have one life and we are judged on that one life on earth by a, by a judgmental God on whether we go to heaven or hell forever, um, we are judged, some of us, on 90 years and some on a, on a life that lasts a few minutes before babies die after being born. Some are judged on having perfect physical bodies and being millionaires. Others are judged on one lifetime racked with uh, disabled bodies. If I said that, people say, okay, fair enough. Um, we either believe that or we don't. But people don't actually laugh. But when you come out with an alternative view, suddenly it's very funny. I find the, the version of life that I've just described extremely funny um, in, in comparison but they have people who believe that and expound that view have every right in the world to have that view and expound it. I'm tolerant of them, I ask people to be tolerant of another view. Well now th this, this is, is not entirely unreasonable but th there are a couple of questions. First of all, why you? And secondly, if I may say so, you have confused the message by an awful lot of predictions. Mm -hmm. For, you, you've told us that there are going to be mm. earthquakes mm -hmm. or, and, and some of them are going to happen quite soon. Yeah. Well, two things to that. Um, first of all, why me? Well, why anybody? I mean, people would have said to Jesus and many other people like Jesus that have not been written into history. I mean, that was the most famous uh, effort of this kind to wrest control of this planet from these forces. But there have been many before that. They would have said, why you? You're a carpenter's son, for goodness sake. Who the heck are you? So, so, that, that's, that's, so, yeah, so but, why anyway? You are, you are, you're saying you're, you're part of, you were part of Jesus' soul before. Precisely. You were also part of many other people's lives on the way through As history. As we all have been. Many, we, we've all been uh, on this earth and uh, incarnated into different physical bodies many times. It's called reincarnation. But the, 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 other, the other point you bring up about the predictions. Yes. If I am given information from beings who have proved to be perfectly accurate day after day after day and things they've told, told, told us are going to happen and they happen. They told you Saddam Hussein was dead and he's That's not. That's right. He's, yes, he is. Well, he, well, I watched his birthday party on the television yesterday. All I, can, all I can say to you is all that glitters is not gold. Hang about and watch and wait. But I'll tell, say two things to watch for and let the alarm bells go if they happen. 
One is if they suddenly announce he is dead now, therefore they don't have to explain the past and, and what's happened over the last few weeks and the fact that he's been dead for many weeks. And secondly, if they say we've done a deal, he's gone into exile, and part of the deal is not to name the country he has gone to, therefore disappear Saddam, let the alarm bells ring. But those two things are likely to happen, and you will be saying, oh, well, he's been dead for some time. But we saw him on the television yesterday yeah. as celebrating his birthday. All that glitters is not gold. I Just see. hang about yeah. and wait. I see. Now, what about, what about eruption? When may we expect tidal waves, eruptions, earthquakes? Well... Because of the nature of the way the Earth has been treated over a long period of time, a tremendous amount of energy has built up within the Earth that cannot get out. If it doesn't get out, bang. So this is going to be released in a controlled manner, as controlled as possible through earthquakes, through volcanoes and such like. If they don't happen, this is not punishment, if they don't happen, there is no Earth. Because of the way the Earth's been treated, the Earth is also extremely, extremely weak. And it's in the situation now where it cannot function by itself as an independent, independent entity. It is in, in effect on a life support machine already. Now the question is, it's a bit like a patient where they say the patient needs this operation to survive, but is the patient strong enough to take the operation? And that is the point that the Earth is at now. When these things happen... As will they will. You, as they will, my goodness, they will. When is the, when is the it, first thing going to happen? Well, it will certainly happen this year. The first sequence will begin this year. Uh, the question is that they are making before it starts is, is the Earth yet strong enough to survive well, let me these ask you, changes? Why should we believe you if, if we have trained, highly intelligent, erudite scientists who tell us that none of these things are going to happen? Why should we believe you? Well, first of all, two things to that. First of all, uh, the same kind of erudite scientists, uh, but highly intelligent, once said the Earth was flat. Uh, and, and the people that said the Earth was round were laughed at. And the same thing's happening now. You know. The second thing is, I am asking no one in this theatre, no one watching this programme, no one on this planet, to believe a word of it. But well, why are the you saying it then? Because the fundamental law of creation is that of free will. To be given opportunities to make decisions and choices you, based on information. If you could give us some kind of proof, anybody can get up and say these things are going to happen because they've been divinely inspired. And lots mm -hmm. of people have done it in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, in the year 1000, we had all these people coming up saying that the world is going to end. And lots mm -hmm. of people ran at the top of the mountains yeah. as they have been doing hundreds of years. I'm not saying the world's going years. to end. I'm saying it could. But they're saying all sorts, yes, well, these people probably said the mm. same thing. Nothing happened. And they said, ah, it's because of the power of my prayers that saved. Is this what you're going to no, do? No, I mean, some of these things are not, um, they, they are the consequence of 12,000 years of human free will choice and behavior. Therefore, many of them are unstoppable. And I'm not going to uh, stand up and say, well, they're not happening because of what I've done. Uh, some of them are going to happen. And uh, I'm not asking anyone to believe it. But you see, if, if the traditional but church... But then there's no point in his saying But it. of course not. You see, why should I impose... Did you just agree with me? Why, why should I impose my will? Why should I try to impose what I'm saying on anyone? They have the right to listen to what I'm saying, but if you to listen to what the traditional church is saying. If you don't give them saying, any kind of proof, if you don't give them any reason to believe in you, they will dismiss you as a crank, which is what they're doing. Well, that's their free will choice. But, Terry, uh, but that's if, just I am an easy say, if I am saying that these things are going to happen this year, then we'll see, won't we? And what will happen if they don't happen? What will happen to you? They will happen because if they don't happen, there will be no Earth. And it is, it's as simple as that. And I frankly don't care what anyone thinks. They have free will to make their own choices on what is said. I say wait and see. Ladies and gentlemen, David Icke. Thank you. Thanks to David. Now, moving on.